Welcome to episode 97 um, of this series where I'm programming an NES game and tonight I am streaming so we have some people live on on stream or at least one person right now there was a second person that disappeared um, we were just talking about logging I had tweeted out a um, comment about 47 gigs of logging um, that was essentially useless and just clogging up the drive and um, but anyway these are the kinds of things that you can hear me talk about before I start recording. If you join the live stream on Thursdays at 9 Eastern. Um, how many times people have tapped the start button, for instance? Yeah. Or how about how many times people have searched from the start menu here, but not actually selected any of the results that come back because they're all completely useless 95% of the time. Like, it'd be nice if that search actually, um, you know, brought up results that were things that were on my computer instead of going out and searching the web for example you know um, because I'm generally not trying to search the web from my start menu um, that's what I have a browser for um, I feel like more often than not it causes problems where people um, where people um, don't actually want that to happen um, all right, so anyway, let's uh, let's jump into this. So what had happened last time is I had added this, um, I had tweaked the, uh, the enemy here that fires off these little things and then shoots those enemies. And of course, now all the collision is broken, except for when I fire a bullet at the enemy there. Um, and I'm curious to know if it affects the enemies that spawn from the bottom. No, so interesting. And and we also are still running up against the limit of entities that we can spawn right now because of how many bullets are here. We have to look at if there, I mean, there's a way we can increase that because we have the memory, I believe, to do it, but it's problem is right now the um, size that that comes up against is bigger than 255 uh, bytes for all the entities and so we can look at a few things including um, if we want to do something like um, pack some of these values like uh, we have type data and timer we might want to see if we do we I don't know that we need individual bytes for all of those. I don't know. Um, and then we have these separate X and Y velocities as bytes. Um, search is one of the things I run when it's inside or builds on. Okay. Could it be the collision checks are being skipped each cycle with so many entities on the screen? I don't know that they're being skipped. I mean, it's possible. What's odd about it is that the, I mean, we're spawning the enemy bullet here. Um, what I, what I was surprised to see was that um, the enemy bullet is no longer working and, and it's weird because that all should be, this should be okay. I wonder, and I didn't change anything with that, right? Because I mean, bullet is, yeah. So that's in the repo, so it would have, um, it would have shown a change. Um, I don't think I, yeah, I didn't change anything with that. So. The only thing I can think of is that enemy stream is potentially causing this. I don't know that having too many entities would would cause it to skip. Um, load A, get the Y position and subtract two. Check collision with other entities. If collide, destroy the entities, possibly triggering. Was it, was it this? Did I? Or was that? Check 
bullet collision. This contains the index of the entity from the preceding call. X contains the index of the current entity out. None, no, no modifies Y. Check collision. Okay, that's the player. Oh, okay, so I had taken out, I think that's part of the problem with the enemy because I had, I had left the scout type in, but I did not add the medium type back in. So that's why the player can't shoot the enemy, I think. Oh, there we go, okay. That's weird that that's in check bullet collision, though. Is that just a poorly named? Maybe that's just a poorly named um, I wonder if that's just a poorly named routine. Let's see. Nope. All right, so let me look at this for a second. Type X. Check collision. Branch not equal. This is flyby. That's, again, not a... Bounding box, bounding right. Load a bullet collision. Collision temp. So it looks like it's just this collision must have been but that's weird check bullet collision it's calling that It's a sub it's a subroutine, right? Because it's doing RTS, yeah. So player bullet does that. And it includes it. But enemy bullet is not. Wonder if So it's looping through every... It's looping through every entity. This contains the index of the entity from the preceding call. What, to see if it collides with one of these types? Medium. Enemy 
bullet. So it was this. I wonder if I took it out. I don't know why I took it out. I wonder if I took it out because we were checking too many times for collision across the entities. Oh, that's really funny. So that bullet destroyed that enemy there. This checks against player collision. So that's why that wouldn't be needed there. So just, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about, that's, that's checking Player collision. Is it using X? It's using X. So basically it's saying take the current thing we're dealing with and see if it collides with the player. And for enemy bullet, that makes sense because we want to see if the enemy bullet collides with the player. So this is the opposite. This is the this is the, if the player collides with, um, or the, the player's bullet collides with those. I'll have to go through and rename that, I think. I don't know that I need to do that now, but it's, uh, it was just weird that I... It's funny, it's just like not focusing on this on a daily basis you you uh, you lose some memory related to what actually what you were doing on on the game um, I want to include I want to increase the entity count because I am um, I would like for that to be bigger I don't want to run out of entities um, So total size, so right now we have max entities set up as um, 28, so let's, let's do 32, I know this is going to not work because we um, are comparing it against X, which is 8 bit and that's not uh, going to be able to hold 288 so what we'll have to do is instead of using <clears throat> Let's see. So there's a, there's a quite a bit of finagling that we're going to have to do to make that work. I'm not sure actually because the problem is that now we're spanning past the 255 byte limit of x, which means that we have to then roll over x and then put it have and you know another area of 255 bytes essentially wondering if it's better this is this is the ram so the question was would bank switching help but this is the ram that's holding the information about the entities that are currently in play um, in the level that you're playing at that moment 
and um, and so the issue it's not like it, the issue is that if we had 16-bit registers we wouldn't have a problem because we could just go past 255 and and reference past the base address of of entities right but now that we are expanding the entity entities um, quantity um, right we're, we're reserving the size of an entity times 32 and the size of an entity is let's see one two three four five six seven nine bytes it's nine bytes because the word is um, two bytes right so it's nine times 32 so it's 288 uh, bytes total um, and so that means that we are um, 33 bytes too large. Um, the most we could fit in there is 28, which is that 1C that we had in there without having to create um, or go past, have two separate, how to explain. I mean, basically what we would end up having to do is something like... Um, like this, basically. So if we did this, then we could have um, 56 entities. Well, that's the thing is we are dis disposing them as the wave ends. Um, so as the ships go off screen, the entities, and we can look at that, I'll show you that in real time here. Um, I have that Lua script that I built that shows the shows the entities as they're spawned and despawned. Um, that was I wrote that so I could see when problems occurred what the entities list looked like. So here are the entities and they're all zero right now because nothing is actually loaded. We load the screen, the game now, and so we have the player is entity type three, the cloud is entity type four, um, and you'll see that goes off screen and get, gets deallocated, and now we're allocating and deallocating and those fives are the enemy bullets and they get deallocated as they go off the screen it's just we have too many things on screen at once and it's not even a limitation of the physical sprites because you know yes we might be exceeding the physical sprites but we're also um um actually let me think about that it's possible we're exceeding the physical sprite count but i don't even know that we are and look at the PPU. It's more so that when we get into this situation, we are um, exceeding how many entity things we can store in RAM to keep track of those sprites. So we, we didn't exceed. Um, ah, I keep crashing. So we didn't, we're not exceeding the, um, the the hardware sprite count, so that's not a problem, at least not right now. Um, but we 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 don't we don't have enough RAM to hold all those entities, which is why sometimes we get gaps in that stream of bullets that comes down. So what we could do is we could add a separate thing called entities two, um, and then we have two two sets of entities that we have to process now that might be too much um, we can try and see um, the problem is that now for every time we do this we essentially have to like so for example right here we're going zero um, zero to uh, total entities right um, and we're clearing out the memory now we got to do this for entities and entities two and same thing when we go through the loop of processing the entities, we've got to split that up. Now we could, we could store that location into a pointer so that we have one, one bit of code where we, we process it. We set the, the pointer to the next, uh, the next entities collection and then we do it again and then when we're done we're done um let me think about this so entities is going to be 
a 16 bit. So we could say we're going to have the entity pointer here. And we're going to res 2, right? Because it's it's a 2, two byte location. And also keep in mind, we're doing this in the RAM. We're not doing that in the zero page. We've kind of kept all of this stuff in the zero page because this is the stuff that we were doing sort of um, in the beginning. We could swap it, but some of the stuff that we're doing, like the attribute buffer, we probably want to keep that in the zero page because it's generally faster than just the standard RAM past the first um, 255 bytes. Um, so there's an advantage to leaving it there. Same thing with, um, yeah, with all these things that we're touching very frequently and modifying very frequently. I mean, the, we are with the entities too, but there's only, you know, so much... Um, memory in the zero page and one of these is already bigger than the quantity that the zero page can hold. So what we want to do is, um, so for example, here, instead of this, what we would want to do is load a, um, how do you do this in CC 65? It's something like low byte and then high byte. Um, let me, let me look it up because I don't remember. You can tell the assembler that you want the low byte address of the thing. Um, <clears throat> stagger the waves yeah we could definitely stagger the waves there's nothing that would stop us from doing that or reduce the number of um, reduce the number of enemies that appear the, the the bullets that appear on the on the screen and then it would remove the need to do this but um, I don't know if I want to do that or not I don't know I mean some of this, like I said in previous uh, recordings and streams, it's just me, it's experimenting, you know? Um, so let's see, so. Um, So what I'm doing, if I'm doing this right, is I'm getting the low address of entities and storing that byte into entity pointer and then taking the high part of the address, the high byte of the address of entities and storing that in entity pointer plus one and then we're just gonna use, and then if this works, we can loop through both, um, both sets of entities and this might not even be necessary. We might end up doing something where it's like, I think I, do, do you need this? I don't remember. Yeah. Um, we, we might come back to this and be like, well, that was dumb. We didn't need that many entities to be possible in the game. But while we're trying this, I figured, you know, it's useful to try as an example and then we can um, certainly, um, always get rid of it if we, if we decide that it's not such a, such an important part of what we're doing. Um, what's becoming, um, sort of more, more and more abundantly clear, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is that, you know, the game design portion, of course, is harder, but also that I'm kind of struggling a little bit on that because of just my, um, sort of an experience with the game design portion. Um, so let's see, so entities is at zero, 100. So the low byte was at zero, the high byte, we should get one. 
in A, and then we store that. So then entity pointer is 0, 100, right? So that's good. And now we're just going to initialize that. So the, the game should work exactly the same as before. And it does. Okay, cool. So this is exactly right. Um, boxes you more flexibility when creating new maps. Yeah, I mean, we... Yeah, it's... I'm, I'm debating how I want to off stream and off recording sort of spend time figuring out what um, what my design process is going to be for this because you know I set out to do this as a shooter um, and you know I mean I may end up just saying well whatever it's just a shooter and it's not something that's worth spending a huge amount of time on but um, at the same point it might be cool to do something a little bit interesting with it and just make it you know not just make it just a generic sort of shmup like uh like exists uh everywhere um so but of course that's that's the hard part right that's the game design um so let's store x into um, temp one or it's just temp i think and we'll use temp to be our um counter for which which set of entities we're initializing. So after this, we are going to go here, and then we're going to load A with temp, and then we're going to compare it to, uh, well, we're going to increment temp, and then we're going to load it, and we're going to compare it to 2, which means we have done our second pass, and then branch of, um, if equal, we'll go here. <clears throat> so if it's not equal, then what we're going to do is we're going to load... We're going to load in the position of entities, the address of entities 2, right? And then we're going to go back to clear entities. Should probably do um, <clears throat> load x0, initialize x again because we're starting over. All right, so yeah, that's true. There's always game number two to do something different, but I'm uh, not prepared to give up yet on that I idea. I mean, at the same point, I, I want to get something done this year, so um, I've got to figure out a good plan if I'm going to actually accomplish that um, anytime soon. So we're in the right place. Okay, let me restart the game because I went past the breakpoint. So we're loading X, we're storing it in temp, which it now has the value zero if it didn't already before. No, oh, this is a superfluous. Um, we don't need to do that. Okay, so, but that's all right. So we're storing an entity in one. It's just, why are you not showing the code? Yes, there we go. All right, so that stored it. And then we go through, we do our total initialization of the first set of entities. And then we increment temp, which now becomes one. We load A and we compare it to 2 and it's not equal, so we don't branch. So now we're going to load X with 0 to reinitialize it. Then we're going to load A with um, the lower byte and then load A with the upper byte. And so now entity pointer is pointing to 1FC, which is the location of entities 2, or at least it should be. Let's take a look. Um, Never hurts to double check. Entities two. Yep, okay, cool. So, um, and now we're doing the same thing, just offset from 
entity pointer, which is pointing to um, why is that? Why is that F F F F? location that's the value that's oh that's x oh because I hit f okay that's why because I hit I hit f5 to skip over it okay so that's that's all good so that's two and now compare it and it's equal so now we're done with that initialization um, and we're setting up our mirroring and the game is ready to go and things should be normal. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I understand you're not, uh, telling me to give up on anything. I, it's more so just, uh, you know, uh, it's, um, I'm not ready to, um, sort of declare that I'm uh, incapable of making this uh, in a short period of time unless I stick with sort of a tried and true existing formula. Um, but I'm also realistic enough to admit that, you know, it, there may come a point where I, where I just sort of make this a clone of some existing shooter with some, you know, very minimal sort of superficial graphics differences. So, um, Yeah, it's um, mostly I'm just not sure what's the best test bed for um, kind of designing these um, interactions quickly. Because while I don't mind doing it on stream necessarily, the stream time is limited and the, the uh, recording time is limited. And I feel like it would be more worthwhile for everybody if I focused on the actual implementation portion on the video versus me sitting around and goofing around with how we're going to make this a playable game. Like there are going to be times where that's just part of the process that I'm putting together, right? Like as you have an idea and you mess around with it, you might go, oh, well, that worked fine and you know, what I tested out wherever, but on the NES, for some reason, it doesn't work maybe due to a technical limitation or some something like that. So I don't necessarily wanna um, say that it's gonna be all just me coding things that I kind of know how I want them to work, but at the same time, um, there's certainly going to be um, I think I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm anticipate or trying to anticipate a, that there's going to be the possibility that that will be, um, um, what's the right word? It'll just be less frequent that I'm, um, dealing with that. Um, you know, I just thought of something. Uh, you know, that probably, let me see, compare X with total entities. No, that would be okay. All right. For some reason, in my mind, I was concerned about an addition past byte 250, the value 255, uh, and not handling that properly with the entities, but that that's actually okay. That shouldn't be a problem. So um, now what we have to do is anytime we're referencing the entities, we have to reference entity. Oh, oh man. So this is going to be, so thinking about this, <clears throat> ugh, this is going to be 
the, so, so <laughs> sorry, I thought of something and, and, and it's ugly. So let's, um, let's talk about this. So what we had done with the entities is before in memory, we had this chunk of information that was, you know, entities. And then I said, well, I want to have more entities. So let's have two. two entities lists and what I'll do is whenever I work on the entities I'll have entities pointer and it will either have the address of this right or it'll have the address of that so we'll just keep alternating back and forth the problem is that the entities from both lists need to interact with one another. So that means that now we have to have, we have to traverse both lists together. <sighs> That's kind of gross. That's going to be really don't like that because now what we're talking about is we're talking about maintaining two separate lists that have to interact with one another which means that not only are we processing two lists to process the game logic of the entities in both lists but then each of the items that interacts with other entities in the in the game has to go check again against the entities in both lists now the caveat there is that the player is always going to be in you know entities slot zero but that does that's only the player that has a fixed position the the bullets are going to be for example in you know or, or the enemies are going to be in any of those possible lists i'm almost wondering there are two things we can do i mean obviously we can go back to the way that it had been but I'm almost wondering if it makes more sense to do something like we have, you know, a, a projectile list of entities. I, my handwriting is awful. It's not helped by this tablet. Projectiles and um, we'll say ships or um, objects so non projectiles basically and so the projectiles can interact with the, the objects in the ships and objects entity list um, the ships and objects will interact with one another but you wouldn't have to do something where the, the limitation would be that, for example, projectiles wouldn't interact with other um, projectiles. But that then means I mean, I guess that's okay because that's a pretty clear differentiation and then that gives us 28 projectiles possible on the screen and 28 objects on screen. It's not quite as evenly distributed in terms of, um, um, it's not, not as, it's not uniform, which, which makes it a little bit more difficult to manage in some ways, but I'm not against that idea, but I don't think I want to, do I want to do that tonight? So basically here, so <clears throat> we can, we can keep some of this code the same, but basically instead of it being just a generic entities, it's uh, projectiles and objects, we'll say. Right, and then, um, so 
first we'll initialize the projectiles and then once we're done with that we'll initialize the objects um, this is gonna break a bunch of stuff but that's okay let's see draw entities Warning, yeah, that's fine. Shooter, error, symbol, entities, pointer. So now, where, we're, where we were before doing a process entities loop, what we're doing is a process, we do two, two loops. We process first the entities, and then we process the objects. And we could break them up into two discrete loops because we don't have to check the ent the the projectiles against non-projectile types. Okay, so let's let's um, let's do that. So process object loop, and then this will call this. Um, process uh, projectile loop and then now the thing with this is we might end up even creating two different types not just entity as a generic thing but I don't know that I want to go down that road right now we're already doing something that I'm not sure I'm super okay with but it's it's not terrible I think it might actually work out fine in the end but um, I just wasn't expecting to do this necessarily um, all right and then skip object entity and this is skip projectile entity um, and then so we have <clears throat> we're just shifting things around right now essentially and you can even shift this code around Cloud, explode, player. Me, I'm an enemy stream. These are projectiles. Those are non projectiles. Um, clear object entity. That could even be a, a routine, potentially, so that we're not duplicating this code. But again, let's just get it working and we can always optimize later. Entity object complete. And this is now objects. And then this is projectiles. Okay. Let's get projectile entity. <clears throat> so this logic is pretty. Pretty straightforward. Let me just copy this stuff and move it here. And then this is now entity object. And this is skip object entity. 
part of the other reason I'm changing all of the names of these labels is so that if I miss anything, we get an error where the label doesn't exist. Um, which is important because otherwise we are going to have a bug. I'm sure there's going to be a bug anyway. Um, at least one, but several more, more likely. Um, so process entities and then so we do the object entities and then we do the projectile entities and then this should be projectiles. Um, Entities that spawn bullets, entities that are mines, entities that home empire, etc. Yep. All right. So, all right. What else? Uh, clear. This should be projectile entity. Process, process, process. Skip projectile entity. Um, we got to fix the other code that is done. Process. Projectile entities and process entities loop. Okay, so now we got to go fix all the code that's actually being called here. So, for example, this should be projectiles entity. And this should be objects because this is an object. <coughs> Um, oops. All right, so that's that. And then this is process enemy bullet. And what is it doing? It is get the Y position and subtract two. Check collision. So this is, let, we'll come back to that because this is where it, we're getting a little more tricky where it's actually checking the interaction so this is checking um, load A. So this is now checking to see if it collides with the player. So this is checking, this should be objects. And then this should be projectiles. Um, this is objects and this is projectiles. So um, basically any place where we're not using X is going to be the projectile because, uh, sorry, where we're not using X as the, um, the player. So it should be using objects. Um, and anywhere we are using X, it is the, the projectile. because we know that player is always at zero, so we never bothered with the X. We're just reading the base one, um, which makes it easier to visually spot where we gotta go make those replacements. Um, and I'm doing them by hand right now because I wanna make sure that I'm actually reading the line and changing it, like this one I missed. <clears throat> that should be objects, okay. Um, this should be Projectiles, projectiles, projectiles. Okay, so that's good. And then medium is an object because it is a... ship type. So we can... just replace all of those. Okay, the low altitude projectile, as the name implies, is a projectile. So that would be in here, like that. That's all good, I think. Um, oh, except for these, where we're looking at the player location. 
and that's how we're adjusting um, how we're moving the low altitude projectile on screen. Uh, yeah, so let's see. <clears throat> I think that's good. Uh, we got to check add map object in a moment to make sure that we are fixing that guy up. So this is going to be objects plus um, that can go away now. That was me saving that from Visual Studio, so that can go away. This now needs to be also replaced because an explosion is an object. Um, and then this is the player, and this is definitely an object. Um, okay. What is this check? Okay, so this is the enemy, this is the, sorry, the player collision with the map. So that's all, that all has nothing to do with projectiles. Um, okay, so that's good. Oh, the only other problem is now where we have any complete, it's um, entity object complete. And then um, clear entity. I don't have that in any of uh, clear entity. Um, that has to be changed to clear object entity. And this is clear. And again, I know that that's all sort of the same okay, code. Um, have you given any thought to adding in debug functions in the future using controller 2? You know, I haven't. Um, Although I, I do, I, you know, I do definitely, um, I could certainly, you know, do something like that um, in the future. Um, funny story about that. When I was, I don't know, I don't know how old I was. When, when I got Mega Man 3 as a kid, um, that was the only Mega Man game I has, had as a kid. I didn't have a whole bunch of NES games, but that was one of my one of my favorite games. Um, I discovered accidentally that um, using Controller Two, you could um, in, uh, make it so that Mega Man doesn't die when he falls down um, one of the pits, and he he basically, if I remember right, um, becomes invincible. Um, and also, you can make him jump higher too. Um, it must have been some sort of like programmer test function. I don't even remember how I discovered it, but I was always uh, kind of proud of myself for finding it. And, uh, and uh, it was it was a neat thing to do. And then when you when you used it, and you fell down the pit, the music stopped playing in, in the level, but you could continue on it was a weird. Um, it was sort of a weird feature of the game. There was also that there were there was that, and then when I was uh, when I played Super Mario Brothers two, I figured out a, a way to uh, when you killed enemies, it would cause um, there was this one spot where if you killed the enemies in the, exactly the right way, when they died instead of falling off the screen, they'd float up the screen. That was kind of fun too. Um, all right, so. Where, where are we at? Enemy stream. Um, so this is a project. This is an object. Oh, this should be objects. Clear. What is it? It's a flyby clear object entity. Entity object complete. Clear entity. Clear object. Oh. Yep. <clears throat> this is the 
player bullet, clear, projectile, entity, projectile complete. Let's see where we are broken. Um, okay, so shooter asm 920. What is this? Load new games to. Oh, okay. We're initializing the player. Um, and then we initialize that cloud. Which I don't know that we need to do here right now, but just to kind of keep all things the same. So no reference to unnamed loads. Symbol process entities loop is undefined. Shooter 1475. Wait, what? Process entities loop. Oh, 1457. Um, pro process projectiles, projectile loop. All right, process projectile loop. Okay, that was just a typo. Process object loop fourteen fifteen process. There's an extra e. Okay, good. So cloud asm. We did it. Did what I was hoping, which is that it um, we found a bug by the fact that we did not we rename this so this is entity object complete sometimes the easiest way to do oh i didn't even touch this um sometimes the easiest way to address large scale changes is if you can you purposely make the code break wherever you need to make a change by like renaming a variable or, or something um, that's relevant and then it kind of you you use the compiler to to help you find um, the next thing you need to do. Um, and the object complete. Player asm. I just not save this. Uh, enemy stream 51. Clear object entity, add map object, add map object. There it is. And the object complete. Um, low altitude projectile. This should be and the proj um, projectile complete. And then that. And clear object entity. Oh, this is clear projectile entity. <clears throat> okay. Check player collision. I don't think we touch that at all. I don't remember. Uh, check player collision. We did. Um, so what's the problem? Entities is 1246. Oh, that's going to be, oh, sorry, 64. This is skip player collision check entity object complete. Um, why was it there twice? I don't know. 1246 in Shooter Asm. Uh, okay, so what is this doing? This is, oh, this should be objects because this is the player modification.
Um, this is going to add it to the projectiles list. And same thing here. Okay, that's good. There is code in ma add map object we're going to have to change because um, it occurred to me that um, depending on what kind of... Well, no. Adding a map object, it's a, I guess it's always going to be an object, right? Not a not a projectile. So let's see two. Okay, so this is going to be the projectile. We hadn't we hadn't touched this yet because we were there was a lot to go through here. So get the Y position and add two, and then store it in projectiles. And then clear projectile entity. We did that part already. And then we're going to load the data. So that's projectiles. And then we're going to increment the X position. Oh, this is all projectile stuff, it looks like. Okay. Check bullet collision 15. Okay, so entities doesn't exist here. So what we want to do is we're starting from. Okay, so so what the bullet is going to check against is. Other objects, right? Because check. Check bullet collision. It's called by player bullet, so it's just going to look at objects, and then <clears throat> check their bounding box, which right now is hard coded. Um, and then this is projectiles because we're getting the bullets position, um, and that's why we're using Y because it's a different index there. Um, bullet collision, why? Okay, so that's all pretty straightforward. And then this is what? Get the entity index back from the stack. Um, and then load A, no entity. Destroy the bullet. So this is going to be the projectiles. Oh, right, okay, so this is, yeah, so this is destroying the entity of the projectile, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, the, it removes the projectile, and then it updates the entity to make it a an explosion. And then... Clears this out. I think that's good. I think that's good. Let's see. Shooter Asm fifteen eighteen. Uh, add map object. Okay, yeah. So um, it just gets added to objects. Simple enough. Draw entities, right, okay, so this, uh, let's go back. So the entities that are being drawn, they're gonna be, <clears throat> there are two lists, right? So this is maybe a good, good area for us to use that pointer that we were doing So that we just have the one loop. Right, we could do this. Do that 
and replace all that code. Now this is all auto-generated code, so we're gonna have to fix this in the um, <clears throat> fix this in the asset tool. But let's get it working here, and then we can once we're done with this, we can. Um, Come back to it. So let's see. So we're gonna load that and store it into temp. This is like what we were doing before. So we're gonna load A with um, uh, the lower. That's the lower byte, right? <clears throat> High byte is okay. Now I reversed it. So this is the low byte of. Uh, we'll process the objects first, stored into entity pointer, and then load A with the high byte of objects and store that into entity pointer plus one. And then this is draw entities. And then once we're done, let's move this here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna load a temp, or no, we're gonna increment temp, we're gonna load a temp, and we're gonna compare it to two, and we're gonna branch if equal past this and go out of this function. Otherwise, we're going to load a with projectiles, store it, into entity pointer projectiles so we're loading up the pointer and then we're going to load x with a zero and we're going to jump to draw draw entities so now it's going to loop through first it's going to loop through the objects and draw the entities and then it's gonna loop through the projectiles and draw the enemies. Now we could technically optimize this by um, having the two loops because, and I say that that's optimizing it because we could have the one list which is the entities or the objects where we are um, just checking against all the object types and then we have the projectile list where we check against just the projectile types but because I'm doing this manually I think it's better to just hand code it to do this and we can make the asset tool um, figure that out um, when we go modify it but for now I'm, I'm okay with this so Let's, um, let's just see how this looks and it's broken. Okay. Um, cool. That's kind of what I expected to see, but. So if we go into process object entities, X is zero and um, We're just going through the projectiles and we're assumingly just looping through and we're done. Um, where's the object list? That's actually what I want to see because we actually have, or we're supposed to have objects and we don't seem to That's weird. Um, <clears throat> process object loop something. Something looped this back when it shouldn't have. Let's restart because there's already something a little bit wrong here. Um, all right, so x is zero, and the player it's the player, so. We process the player, it's alive, so we do what we're supposed to here, and then process the player stuff is done, okay. This is all sort of as expected, I'm not doing anything, we're just checking to see if it's colliding with anything on the map. 
one possible optimization here is if we know that we're definitely not doing any sort of map collisions at the high altitude view of the world, we can turn off this whole check um, because it's just a waste. But anyway, um, so we've got all this stuff going on. Um, let's just get past this um, collision loop. So it should just go to there. Okay, so then it's object complete. Uh, is that object complete? Process player. Process player, it jumps to entity object complete. So let's see. <clears throat> it doesn't look right, but what do I know? Entity object complete, skip object entity. Okay. Oh, there it is. I didn't see it right above it. Okay, so transfer X to A, clear carry, add carry the size, transfer A to X, compare, done, process object, then process object loop. Okay, so the next one is a cloud, load object, clear carry, add one. Load A and compare. Branch if equal. Okay, so that's all good. <clears throat> so far, so good. So that's it in terms of the object entities. Um, so then it should go immediately to there. And then it zeroes out X and it starts on projectiles. And there should be none. And so it should then begin populate of the OAM data. In memory, entity counter, entity start, max entities. Oh, well, that that should be okay. We're using X for anything. Hey, Bonchaku. That was just all. We're shifting the starting position around. Um, should be load x with zero, shouldn't it? Well, it is zero in this case. Oh no, okay. Well, it should be both, right? So x, unless, hmm. I guess coming in it would have been it would have also been zero. Um, Here it's weekends, so we usually don't check. We'll stay a little bit since the kids want to play. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for uh, hopping on the stream. Yeah, with you uh, being 
a day ahead, and it being a Friday, I know it's uh, it's a little tricky. Uh, like I put on Twitter, I um, I did in fact have a uh, an obligation. So uh, him from the future, yeah. <laughs> um, it's uh, it, it was funny. It just happened to work out that I had to be. Um, I had to be at a game for this the bocce league we play um, in my wife and I and um, usually we can work around it but there have been a couple of times where it is um, it conflicts with with the stream um, I'm surprised why thought I guess I'm doing the transfer of A to X, so... Oh, right, that's why X... Okay, so it actually can't be zero. Hmm. That presents a different problem. Well, it, that's not going to be the issue that we're seeing here, but it's uh, 227 in... You're also in the future. Hey, provoking a storm. How's it going? Yeah, a bunch of people here are uh, in time zones where it's already tomorrow for me. So, but uh, it's all good. Um, let's see now. Why? <coughs> So it's getting this entity one FC. So let's see. So we're loading from entity pointer. And that's objects. One FC. Is the player already dead? Because of whatever weird issue we're facing here. Uh, put a oops breakpoint there. Hmm. just be continued to be incremented we don't care about branch not equal the rise load x zero oh that's just if it's um, looping around uh, wait a minute so we actually don't want to touch No, that's okay. Um, so I'm just looking over because we have the logic. Um, you're in CST. Yeah, you're in the past. We have all all the time zones. It re reminds me of I watched. A, I haven't watched Family Guy in a long time, but um, the, there was the episode he goes. Where does he go to? Somewhere in Europe, I think. I don't think it was England, but I don't know. They go to Europe and, um, oh, Italian. They go to Italy and, uh, and he, he goes, uh, he calls Joe and he goes, uh, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here in the future. And, and he goes, Peter, Peter died six hours ago. <laughs> and he's like, we can't go home. That was just a funny episode, um, or a little clip that I saw. We don't, we don't actually have uh, cable anymore, so I don't really watch a lot of TV anymore. Um, all right, I'm totally distracted now, so we're in the projectiles. Project 
projectiles high, and so now... Okay, so why... So there's there's a problem where it's it's the projectiles are all... Or the, the entity lists are all confused now, or, or broken or something. Um... clear out here so that that clears out let's um, let's make sure that that is working as expected so it should be loading most of it with <clears throat> well that's wrong um, what happened Entity pointer is, let's see, projectiles is 100. What happened? Load A with that and stores that into entity pointer. Load A with projectiles high byte and it stores that into that. Load A with F and then it should be storing it into yeah. Uh, where is 100? It's here. What's X? X is 0. A is FF. How come... How come it's not doing it, though? Or it doesn't look like it's doing it. Uh, that's weird. Right, any point, why did any pointer? Itself become FF. <clears throat> so that's 100. Any pointer is, I don't know why I'm, 2f8 and the value is 0 for the low byte and 100. So, right, so it's 100 plus, oh, is it? I bet it's not. I think it's probably 2, it's using the address of entity pointer. Um... This was a potential screw up. <sighs> Can I? <laughs> Is that a real thing that I'm doing, or am I just making that up? Illegal addressing. Um, mm. So the problem is it's taking the address of entity pointer and adding that to the offset of exposition, not the, uh, not the base address. Is that, it's not what I really want to do either. Crap. Um, like I know I can do, I know I can do this where I've got an address that's a pointer and I can use the Y index, but that is problematic because now that means we have to take, 
let me take a look at the addressing modes because I don't remember. I knew that seemed too easy. Um, so. This will take the address and add X and then grab the pointer location value. It's really what I want to do. <clears throat> also, does that only work with zero? Page. Uh, yeah, that only works with zero page. And that is a problem. Uh, it's a problem just because that means we got to, you know, write. I mean, it's not unsolvable, but it was just stupid. Um, I was trying to have a shortcut of not having to have both things be a separate loop. But let's um, fix that. And then da -da -da -da, check the total entities increment. Um, this is just garbage now. This is clear projectile entities. This is uh, not necessary. <clears throat> and then this becomes. I feel like we can probably make some sort of macro of this, but right now I just want it to work, so let's do that. Okay, so that fixes that problem with the initialization despite it doubling the code there. Um, all right, so let's reset the game and just double check that code. I mean, now it should just be correct. It's pretty straightforward. Yep, that's all right. And then so my idea with the entity pointer was slightly off, but that's okay. At least it explains why we were seeing strange behavior there. All right, so now for draw entities, it's like I said before, I thought we were gonna be able to get away with having just the one, but in some sense, this is actually a little bit more efficient um, because we're not comparing against entity types that won't exist in the list. Um, projectiles, let's get rid of all this stuff that can move out there again that's actually no longer necessary and then do, 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 do. you can actually cheat a little bit and say entity projectiles drawing 
we'll, we'll have two different scopes so we don't have to worry about the labels. And then we will split this up. Now, the one thing that this then means is that the asset tool has to know whether it's an object or a projectile. to call the right list. Um, so let's see, so in here, a couple of things. So this is the projectiles code. Where's the end scope at? So we want to change this to from um, entity pointer. Oh, I can't do it in just the selection. Pointer plus, make that projectiles plus. <clears throat> okay, and then in the latter part of the file, same thing for objects. And so we'll figure out a way to annotate that in the, um, the sprite definitions, and that will then serve the code generation to understand how to split that up to look in the appropriate list of entities. everywhere now, right? Yep, okay. <clears throat> um, done sprite, drop, jump, draw entities, done sprite. So that's in that scope, end scope. Yep, okay, good. Um, and then for this, we want to. I'm just going to load uh, load X with a zero. There's some more complexity around that related to how we're um, uh, wrapping the entities around to create the flicker effect, but we don't. Ha I don't want to tackle that right now. Um, yeah. So let's see. Code overflows by a thousand and three bytes. That seems, well, okay, a couple of things. First of all, this is projectiles, so we can get rid of this. We've doubled the code here, but we can get rid of some of these. That will hopefully help the problem. Exploded is no longer necessary. Drawing 
player sprite is no longer necessary here. Drawing the cloud sprite is no longer necessary here. Drawing the enemy bullet sprite is. Low altitude projectile, medium can go away. Scout can go away. Enemy stream can go away. Okay, that's good. And then for this, we can get rid of all the projectiles, right? Just like we did with the non-projectile things. We're now checking object things. Okay, so <clears throat> what did I do? Branch not equal draw bullet sprite. This is not necessary in objects. That is for the player. That's the animation for the explosion. That's the cloud. That's the enemy bullet. Uh, low altitude projectile. That's medium sprite. Scout sprite. Maybe stream sprite, that's good. Okay, so let's see if that uh, symbol draw scout sprite is undefined. Human error, okay. Let's see how we're doing here now. <sighs> okay, now what? Not even close. Um, See if we even get a few frames here that make sense. Partially, okay. So what is So that's our first list, the endies, and then the address of, well, why does that get messed up? So that's the projectile list that I'm looking at. And then I um, really want to look at the object list.
Hmm. That's not right at all. Um... That's normal. <clears throat> Process entities, load X zero, go through the objects, clear object entity, and the object complete, any object complete, skip object entity if we don't know what it is, transfer X to the done process object entities, jump process object loop. Uh, and then we start again, we load X with zero, and we go into process projectile loop. And we get the type from projectiles, and we do these comparisons and jump process enemy bullet. Okay, and then clear project projectile entity. Okay, that all looks reasonable. A um, couple things. So, process entities not called from anywhere else. Clear object entity. Is it only being called from objects? Uh, yeah. Clear projectile entity. Pin bullet done. Check player collision. <clears throat> clear project projectile entity. Clear projectile entity. That's that. Um, check player collision. Check player collision. Let's get player collision check. This should be entity projectile complete because it is the, yeah. So where else are we? that, store it, and the projectile complete, that's destroying the entities, skip player collision check, that might have been enough to cause the weird behavior, let's see. starts off right and then it gets totally screwed up so or it starts off close at least I guess I want to see where why it's modifying um, Entity number three, three type. Um, was it one FC? I think it is. Yes, yeah, so that's the player. Um, and then <clears throat> one FC. I gotta add eighteen to that. So one FC and hex is five hundred eight plus 
nine, and then again, so that's two OE. So I want to know when the entity type gets modified at, at a breakpoint uh, when it's written to. Right, let's restart. So, draw scout sprite, sprite mem, <clears throat> that's weird, sprite mem y, oh, well, I'll be damned, okay. I totally forgot about that, but that makes sense now. Okay, so we had reserved the entire 200 range for our OAM data, uh, but now the entities are overlapping that, so that's no good. Um, so let's fix that, shall we? Um, and we can fix that. relatively quickly, I think. Um, if I can just figure out. Okay, here's a clear mem. Let's move it into the 300. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this like that and we're gonna put the OAM data in 300 instead of 200. And then we're gonna initialize this like that. And then this should be three because we're telling three, not four, because we're telling it that the location of the start is at three. Uh, we're making the sprite mem set to three instead of two. Um, that's fine. Um, this should also be three. Okay, so we have that now. Draw sprites, draw entities. So this should also be three. That was a silly mistake, but I hadn't even thought about the fact that that memory, those memory regions overlap now, or had overlapped. Let's see. Shouldn't be getting that behavior anymore. Okay, well, it's better. Um, Still not great, but it's better. And I think this is more so of a problem. Uh, hey, player's guide. Um, I think this is more of a problem because of the rotation stuff we're doing now, or we added for the, let's see. Where's my script? Where's my script at? Okay, so this is a little bit more like logical in terms of the content, but it's um, <clears throat> what is this doing? Clear object entities. Objects, okay. Right, okay, this is fine. 
run the script again so we can see the entities. So we get one and then four. What, what about the projectiles? Is it just because the memory has garbage in it now for some reason? Yeah, there is. There's crap in here. What, uh, what is this? What is this? So, we're interested in seeing 300 here, which now should be... so many oh because it oh okay yeah that's fine all right so <clears throat> that's been effed out and that's fine so that should just stay that way let's just see how that changes as we progress okay that's still looking okay and then we're going to start the game by hitting start on the controller. Let me slow down the emulation here so we can kind of watch and see what happens. Uh, yeah, so that's all. Why is that all being modified? Did I change too many things? for the OA DMA. Reset the counter. Set memory range, this should be three. And then... <clears throat> bit load A, store 2340, that's okay. Copy DMA, DMA copy sprite so hardware is clean. So wait for V blank. What is this doing here? Is this the initialization? Yeah, so this is. Okay. So initialize sprite loop. Load AFF. The sprite mem wrong is. That may be the problem. No, let's see. That's sprite mem. That's zero three. That's okay. So all okay. I mean, the only other, the only thing I can think of is that there's now some sort of issue with the um, with the way that we're doing this rotation for the entity start. Let's um, let's just do this. Let's um, how, do you, how do I do the, the multi line select? I forgot. comment that whole thing out and if I remember right draw entities is expecting what so X is the counter into the 
entity and then the y value is where we're putting it into our sprite memory so let's load y with zero and load x with zero and just keep it simple for now we're not going to get the flicker but uh, i don't even want to mess with that right now because i just want it to work and wrap it up for the evening all right so Uh, wow, okay. I'm not even sure. Not even sure how it's so broken right now. Let's see. It's weird because the entities should not be forcing this to populate like that. So That's that, and then, well, let's, you know what, let's do, let's do that, and we'll do both lists, um, and just, we'll just have to shove some things down. plus six. Oh, right, because that's the, uh, that's the type. Uh, and this should be object address. And then, this should be projectiles address equals projectiles address plus entity size and then we'll do this again right below it and I don't care about this stuff programming language okay so those are our two lists so let's restart the game restart our list all right so if we slow this down you can see really quickly one and four Start the script. Damn it. One and four. But the player is.
that's the player's position. <clears throat> player should be three, right? That's what it has been, unless that changed. Um, yeah, so players is three. So up until that point, like, we're not even getting out of That's strange. Um, hmm. Does not look right. Uh, is it one FC? It is one FC. Okay, one FC. That's what I have here. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's three. Let's 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 put a breakpoint on when this is written to which it should not be. <clears throat> Collide bit shift. Why does this think this should be colliding with player asm? What on earth? Um, object enter Process player, entity object complete, object entity timer, subtract C entities. Object entity Y world position camera, objects, objects. Why does it think that it's complete? Why does it think it's colliding with the background? FC00. Zero zero. Hmm. Let's take a look at this here. Let's say branch of equal check collision loop. So let's check. Um, where is that check collision loop? That's up here somewhere. This is the collision loop. Player velocity is done. So let's let's rewind here for a second and take a look at <clears throat> the emulation is running slow. All right, so we are setting up the player here, um, and then we are in the collision loop. We're loading the X, the player's X position. Which is zero. Why is it zero? One FC. Um, I keep forgetting which one it is. One CF or one FC? One FC. F, 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 F. Why is that not initialized? <clears throat> um, 
there was code that was um, clearing out all the OAM I believe for draw to complete. There was some we gotta look at where that was, but we were we were clearing out <clears throat> what is this doing? This is initialized background high and low. Clear object entities. So clear this is all just initializing the game. Right? And then we have the game loop. Load A2, load A0, start, okay. So, game state, if the game state is playing game, it's pause state, game play state, so we're doing all this stuff, check objects, level done with objects, level object data, Check next byte, object confirmed, done with objects. Increment the meta tile sub rows, load new rows. So we're doing our scrolling. Um, skip attributes, process screen. Okay. Sprite. So the only thing I can think of is that there's something wrong with this loop here that's initializing the sprite mem piece um, before we go in. But it, I thought we checked all that. I mean, it should be. Let's take a look at um, what the value of that is here in the debugger. So. No, that looks wrong. Whoa, okay. That is... Well, that's the address. Um, or part of the address, anyway. Sprite. Mem plus one. <clears throat> so it's 6e. That's not right. Why... Why is that wrong? Initialize sprites. So let's take a look at this and see. Because we're clearing out the memory for the DMA sprite copy. And that was working before, but it appears to now have some sort of problem. So sprite mem. Well, that's pointing to 300 now. Let's um, let's restart and double check that that's still the case because we had the overlap, and maybe that was why. Maybe it wasn't a problem before because there was no overlap and we we never noticed it being a problem. So let's see. Let's speed up the emulation a little bit. Um, Okay, so that's just setting up the player sprite, uh, sprite mem. Yeah, that's really wrong. Um, is that because we came out of load level and it never reinitialized that? That's probably the case because we do use that in load level quite a bit. Um, and I thought we were... I thought we were accommodating for that here. Um, no, okay, so, and then let's uh, load A. <clears throat> Zero, store A into sprite mem. Load A. Um, 
zero three store a sprite mem plus one. So we were transferring that over to Romem, but we never cleared it out. And I guess the, the that never created a problem with the entities before because we didn't have that memory overlap like we we would have prior um, or we like we do now. So let's um, let's uh, see if that fixes it. Let's see if why the hell I think oh man, okay. Where is my breakpoint's not working the way I wanted it to? Sprites loop. That's where I want that breakpoint. <clears throat> Sprite mem. 300. Store A. Okay, so the first time through, that's good. Let's take a look at the PPU. Well, we're not going to see anything until we cycle through one time. Um, okay, so oh, wait a minute. Does that not? Strange. What's even more strange is that the cloud seems to be working okay. But we're like getting a whole bunch of them. Way more than we actually need. Sprite mem y, y, let's see, so if we go here, then we're just loading x with zero, y would continue on. Oh, this is still doing the entity counter stuff, which it shouldn't anymore compare. Oh, is that the problem? Because it's not using X anymore. And I'm not setting that up going into this correctly anymore. Um, Hmm. I guess that should be load a zero store a entity counter and then entity start isn't it used in here, is it? into entity counter. We gotta do that here too, because there's two entity lists now. Did I, did I make that? I don't know. <sighs> load a, load x zero, store that. 
Y shouldn't need to change because we're just continuing on. That looks closer. I mean, that that's that looks like what I would expect. It's just that it's like the sprites are jumping around. Except for the cloud. The player one is okay. Or not the player one, the, the cloud one is okay. I um, wonder if there's some sort of weird bug where I'm messing up because I'm assuming the player offset incorrectly. Draw player sprite. Draw player sprite object, sprite mem, blah, blah, blah. Um... Hmm. Uh, let's do this. Player dot asm. Let's just. <clears throat> I'm gonna. comment out this whole thing except for the jump it's just not going to do anything I want to see if we still get that weird yeah so we're still getting that weird bouncing around um, am I making some sort of assumption about no, but maybe I was assuming about how the offset worked in here in the drawing, but it doesn't look like it. Um, draw entities. That's in the assets. That's not what, what I want. Um, <clears throat> doing that here. Um, let's just do, let's turn off. Let's try to turn off turning off the um, drawing of the projectiles and see if we see any difference. No, it's something with So the entity list looks good. It's just something with the way that the sprites are being drawn. It's just messing with the... It's just the Y and X positions are getting messed up by... something. Uh, draw entities. Let's go back to this for a moment here. So this was doing this whole thing with the entity counter and entity start and rolling it around, but that was no longer necessary. We're initializing entity counter setting up sprite mem, we're setting up x and y, and then we come into this, and 
is the memory actually changing or is it an issue with the rendering? It's actually changing. Wait, one FC or one C? Keep doing this. One FC. Why? Who's modifying this? Here's my debugger. What's modifying this? Looks like some sort of counter or something. Compare. What? Doesn't make any sense. Why is that? What are you doing? and doing this so what is modifying this how is a load draw complete load a of this This is the NMI. That does not make sense. Or is it in the NMI itself that that's happening? which is why that is completely crazy. Is something modifying that memory? the stack pointer FD <clears throat> some weird thing where the stack is overflowing into that <sighs> ah, where is this clear mem Initializing that, and then where is the stack stuff? So, um, transfer X to S. Um, all right, so oh. No. So 
Stack is always on page one and works its works top down. So, oh, okay. Well, that's the problem. Or a problem. It's the stack. Why this has not come up before is interesting, but okay, so. What we're saying is we need to do this all in 200 and our memory for the RAM shouldn't even touch 100, um, at least that would, oh, this is going to be a pain. Um, all right, so we're going to go into CC65 and modify the config. So we have a section we called RAM, which is CPU RAM here. And we said it starts at 100. Let's start it at 200. And then this becomes 100 smaller. Um, but then we have to move our sprite mem. out of 300 and into 400 and then stuff that's 400 we got four 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 all right so let's see if we did that right okay let's get rid of that because that breakpoint is no longer relevant Here's our memory tool, and so now, um, let's see, so projectiles should be 200, and objects is at 2FC. Okay, it's not quite as completely weird as before, but it's still not right. Um, I have a feeling I know what the problem is, but let's um, take a look at this for a second. So this needs to be two, and this needs to be two FC. We moved all of our entities Let me guess, let me guess, the DMA copy, if I had to guess, the DMA copy will not work with four. Let's see if I'm right, must have PPU DMA. Could be totally wrong about that, but. Thanks, uh, link 777. Uh, let's see here. Uh, most programs write copy OAM similar CPU address memory open and two and then copy OAM every frame 414 writes to 4014 writing end to this register causes DMA secretary to OAM successful place to 100 times in the CPU is suspended while the transfer is taking place all right so that that is actually allowed so that's good Oh, here we go. And that's that. And um, yeah, so let's see if did 
I get all the places related to that. I thought for sure it was some sort of weird restriction with uh, the Sprite OAM DMA copy um, not working in the 400 range for some some you know bizarre region reason um, but let's see now if we get a better result now that I fixed a couple of things that were wrong there we go now we actually have our sprites woohoo we have our two entity lists and we're at 100 speed and oh right we're not drawing are we not drawing projectiles right now or do they oh we're not processing the projectile list i can't remember i think i commented something out um draw and these No, what did I, uh, this is the object loop, the entity loop. There was something I had commented out. Yep, it's a schmup. That's right. I... Let's see if this will help me find the change I'm looking for. Clear the projectiles and clear the object entities. That's the same. Initialize entities, exposition. Okay, so that's loading the player and the cloud. Player controls. I'm gonna add the bullet. Can I can I actually fire a bullet? So that that actually makes sense. So when I um, let's see, so when a, the player fires a bullet, um, for example, add bolt, player bullet. Is it? Um, is it in here? It is loading the wrong. Um, no. Uh, do, 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 do. Load total entities, add bullet entry, add carry, load A. This should be objects, and that should be objects, and that will fix that problem for that particular issue. Okay, so that's now working as it should. Now, this thing, oh, I see. So you know what it is? So, um, all right, so now what's happening is we are, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know what the problem is. So I, I said, oh, well, add map object only adds map objects, right? Well. Yeah, but that does not work when you're trying to add um, 
when you're trying to um, add projectiles. So um, add map object. So we'll create another identical function here called app add map. Uh, we'll just call it add projectile. And we will end the scope here. The only difference is that we are doing projectiles there. So, all right, so that's that. And uh, now in the, what kind of thing is that? I think it's a medium enemy. In this, we were doing add map object for the low altitude projectiles. Uh, do, 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 no. Low altitude projectile. Oh, that's the flyby. Okay. So instead of calling add map object, we add uh, projectile. And that will. Add a projectile type, and then the low altitude projectile should fire now, as before. So it's pro the problem was it was getting added to the wrong list, which then meant it wasn't getting processed, which is why we didn't see. Um, why we didn't see those things showing up. So they're well, they're still getting added to. Why? Add map object. Add projectile. Can't spell. Add projectile. Uh, add projectile. Projectiles. Projectiles. Add object loop. Okay. Oh, right, it's an enemy stream. Add projectiles. Um, add projectile. That was just dumb. Okay. Guess I forgot. Let's see here. Maybe now it will go back to working. Okay, well, it's sort of working. And projectile. This should be well. Yeah, enemy stream is part of the objects loop, right? Yeah, so enemy stream is an object thing, so it's loading that and then load AT1. Oh, okay, that's the problem. So this is, it adds it to the projectiles list, but then I'm updating the objects list. So um, store AT1. YouTube, blah, 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 and then make that that. So let's see now if that fixes some things. Okay, that's better closer to what it's supposed to be. Weird, weird sort of behavior with some of the um, things becoming non-responsive. 
All right, I'm gonna leave it at this for now. Um, there's, there's, what's happening is there's definitely some sort of issue where the code is um, incorrectly modifying the objects list instead of the um, projectiles list in some of these, and, and I gotta go through and check it out, but the stream went way longer than I expected it to. Um, so I'm gonna wrap it up because I gotta get, I'm gonna be up early in the morning for work um, for some lovely IT maintenance stuff. So uh, as always, thank you for watching and uh, thanks for joining the stream tonight. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Clairvis. I'm also on Nintendo Age as Zelius. I'm posting the recordings on YouTube, so feel free to add a comment. And uh, as always, uh, have a good night and have a great weekend, and I'll see you later. Take care.